October 1922, the Soviet Republic celebrated a great victory. Vladivostok, the last piece of Soviet territory to remain in the hands of the invaders, was wrested by the Red Army and the Far Eastern Partisans from the hands of the Japanese. The whole territory of the Soviet Republic having been cleared of interventionists, the needs of socialist construction and national defense now demanded a further consolidation of the Union of the Soviet Peoples. The necessity now arose to weld the Soviet Republics closer together in a single federal state. All the forces of the people had to be combined for the work of building socialism. The country had to be made impregnable. Conditions had to be created for the all-round development of every nationality in the country. In December 1922, the first All-Union Congress of Soviets was held, at which, on the proposal of Lenin and Stalin, a voluntary state union of the Soviet nations was formed, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Originally, the USSR comprised the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, the Trans-Caucasian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, and the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic. Later, three independent Union Soviet Republics, the Uzbek, Turkmen, and Tajik, were formed in Central Asia. All these republics now united in a single union of Soviet states, the USSR, on a voluntary and equal basis, each of them being reserved the right of freely seceding from the Soviet Union. The formation of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics meant the consolidation of the Soviet power and a great victory for the Leninist-Stalinist policy of the Bolshevik party on the national question. One hundred years ago, an event of global and historic significance occurred. The will of millions of people was embodied in the creation of an unprecedented state. For centuries, humanity has been interested in the patterns and prospects of development. This encouraged our ancestors to reflect. We have come a long way from the days of primitive communities, stone tools, and cave paintings to the era of megacities, space exploration, and technologies of all kinds. Karl Marx and Frederick Engels have shown convincingly that work, as an eternal, natural condition of human life, plays a decisive role in the shaping of man and social progress. The contradictions between the growing productive forces and obsolete relations of production have conditioned the movement to steadily make advance. This law revealed the inevitability of the transition from capitalism to socialism. As Marx wrote, quote, The bourgeois relations of production are the last contradictory form of the process of social production. Contradictory not in the sense of an individual contradiction, but of a contradiction which arises from the conditions of social existence of individuals. However, the productive forces which develop within bourgeois society create, at the same time, the material conditions for resolving this contradiction. With this social formation, therefore, the prehistory of human society comes to an end. End quote. It ends the prehistory of mankind and begins the real history, socialism, and communism. The October Revolution and the formation of the USSR confirmed this scientifically verified prediction. Let us not forget that, since ancient times, our ancestors were driven forward by a dream. It was born out of curiosity and the desire to know what lies beyond the horizon. Curiosity transformed into a thirst for knowledge and an aspiration for development and united with the dreams for a just society. Under Lenin's leadership, socialism became not only a theory and a political trend, but also a social practice. The revolution in Russia made it possible to deploy a massive effort to build a new society. 
In 1922, these efforts also resulted in the creation of the Union of Brotherly Peoples and Sisterly Nations. Humanity had moved on to a new stage of development. For the first time, the essence of the state was not the interests of a group of slave owners, landowners, or factory owners, but the needs of the majority of the working people. The USSR had become the prototype of the future, where nations and nationalities are not enemies, but friends and creators. A country had appeared on the world map which had fully recognized the great potential of internationalism and socialist development. At the end of 1922, the victory of Soviet power over internal and external counter-revolution was assured. Peace was assured. However, the First World War and the intervention of the capitalist powers led to economic ruin. Much of the industrial potential of the republics had been destroyed. The situation of the masses was extremely difficult. The dwindling number of workers weakened the class basis of Soviet power. External threats and an economic blockade aggravated the situation. Lenin's genius provided decisive answers to enormous challenges. First of all, the state plan for the electrification of Russia was drawn up. The State Commission for the Electrification of Russia, Gosudarstvenaya Komisia por Elektrifikatsi Rossi, or GOELPRO, plans begins the restoration of the national economy and becomes the basis for a powerful breakthrough in industrialization. To this day, power stations created according to Lenin's standards still supply electricity to towns and villages in Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Central Asia, and the Caucasus. Thus, from the very first steps of Soviet power, its great creative potential was revealed. Second, Lenin proposed the unification of the Soviet republics into one multinational socialist state. The head of the Bolshevik government accurately addressed the depth of military threats and the scale of economic challenges. The situation dictated that the conventional relations established between the Soviet republics in the first years after the revolution were no longer sufficient. Socialist construction and the defense of sovereignty against the aggression of global capital required reliable unity. A common foreign policy was necessary. Defense had to be reinforced jointly. An economic division of labor, mutual assistance, and cooperation were necessary. The ideological basis for lasting unity was the historically progressive national policy. In full conformity with the principles of Marxism, it was based on proletarian internationalism, the recognition of the equality of all peoples, and the will to unfurl the banner of struggle against colonialism, racism, and all forms of oppression. This was Lenin who proposed the form of unification, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Each republic was part of a single federation with equal rights. Declaration on the Formation of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics Since the Soviet republics were formed, the states of the world have split into two camps, the camp of capitalism and the camp of socialism. There, in the camp of capitalism, we have national animosity and inequality, colonial slavery and chauvinism, national oppression and pogroms, imperialist brutalities and wars. Here. In the camp of socialism, we have mutual confidence and peace, national freedom and equality, the peaceful coexistence and fraternal cooperation of peoples. Attempts made by the capitalist world during the course of decades to solve the problem of nationalities by combining the free development of peoples with the system of exploitation of man by man have proved fruitless. On the contrary, 
The skein of national contradictions is becoming more and more entangled and is threatening the very existence of capitalism. The bourgeoisie has proved to be incapable of bringing about the cooperation of peoples. Only in the camp of Soviets, only in the conditions of the dictatorship of the proletariat, which has rallied the majority of the population around itself, has it been possible to eradicate nationalist oppression, to create an atmosphere of mutual confidence and to lay the foundation for the fraternal cooperation of peoples. It was these circumstances alone that enabled the Soviet republics to repel the attacks of the imperialists of the whole world, home and foreign. It was these circumstances alone that enabled them to bring the civil war to a successful conclusion, to preserve their existence and begin peaceful economic construction. But the years of war have left their traces. Ruined fields, idle factories, shattered productive forces, and exhausted economic resources left as a heritage by the war render inadequate the individual efforts of the individual republics to build up their economies. The restoration of the national economy has proved to be impossible while the republics continue to exist separately. On the other hand, the instability of the international situation and the danger of new attacks render inevitable the creation of a united front of the Soviet republics in face of the capitalist encirclement. Lastly, the very structure of Soviet power, which is international in its class nature, impels the toiling masses of the Soviet republics to unite into a single socialist family. All these circumstances imperatively demand the union of Soviet republics into a single union state, capable of ensuring external security, internal economic progress, and the unhampered national development of the peoples. The will of the peoples of the Soviet republics, who recently assembled at their congresses of Soviets and unanimously resolved to form a union of Soviet socialist republics, is a reliable guarantee that this union is a voluntary association of peoples enjoying equal rights, that each republic is guaranteed the right of freely seceding from the union, that admission to the union is open to all socialist Soviet republics, whether now existing or hereafter to arise, that the new union state will prove to be a worthy crown to the foundation for the peaceful coexistence and fraternal cooperation of the peoples that was laid in October 1917, and that it will serve as a sure bulwark against world capitalism and as a new and decisive step towards the union of the working people of all countries into a world socialist Soviet Republic. Declaring all this before the whole world and solemnly proclaiming the firmness of the foundations of Soviet power as expressed in the constitutions of the Soviet Socialist Republics by whom we have been empowered, we, the delegates of these republics, acting in accordance with our mandates, have resolved to sign a treaty on the formation of a union of Soviet Socialist Republics.